Hey folks, this is Dusty Jones, and I wanted to talk to you about calculating the quadrant count ratio. This is a great stepping stone to uh, determining Pearson's correlation coefficient or the correlation coefficient of a set of data when we're comparing uh, an association or looking for an association between two numerical variables or two quantitative variables. I'm using CODAP and a data set here on granola bars and some nutritional information about uh, 33 different uh, brands of granola bars or types of granola bars. Uh, I want to open up a graph and I'm going to pick a couple of quantitative variables. I want to look at, I'm um, just picking fat, and I want to see how that's related to um, the amount of carbs. So I'm dragging carbs to the y-axis. And I get this relationship, it, uh, or this, this scatter plot, and it looks like there might be a relationship, maybe positive, but then I've got these others here that have a lot of fat, uh, but not much carbs. That's, that's one of those Atkins brand, which is kind of famous for low carb foods. And then I have another point um, that's also kind of out of the way, and that's this uh, blueberry vanilla that has very low fat, uh, but a lot of carbs. So the quadrant count ratio is something that I can measure uh, by creating some quadrants. And the quadrants I'm going to make, I'm going to split this up into four parts, but not just anywhere. I'm going to use the mean of the variable on the horizontal axis, so the mean of fat. Uh, I do that by plotting a value. And the value I want is the mean of that variable fat. There we go. And when I put that, I get the line there. That's going to be that's dividing in our data into two sets, above the mean and below the mean for fat. And now I'm going to find the mean of the variable on the, on the vertical axis, the mean of carbs. I can have CODAP do that by plotting a function. And that function is the mean of carbs, because carbs was the variable I was looking at. And now I've got this data set divided up into four quadrants, one, two, three, and four, if I number them like we do with algebra, quadrants looking at the Cartesian coordinates. I can vary the point size and make them larger or smaller. I'm going to try to make them small so I can see which quadrant they fit in. I'm also going to kind of make the graph a little bit bigger so I can see which quadrant these fit in. So if the relationship is positive, meaning if as fat increases, then carbs tend to increase, those are going to show up mostly in points in quadrant one and quadrant four, or three, bleh, quadrant one or three. If the relationship is negative, there's going to be points mostly showing up in quadrant two and quadrant four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count and keep track of what's in quadrant one, and quadrant three, those are the positive ones. Quadrant one, here are the dots there, the data values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I count here. When I look at my whole list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's actually nine. <laughs> What's going on with that? Uh, one of the things, I think this one, nope. Maybe this one up here. Ah, so this dot here, 7 grams of fat, 29 carbs. Uh, both of these brands have 7 grams of fat and 29 carbs. So this is actually two points. Uh, there's another one somewhere around here that's two points as well. Oh, that one. Um, with 4.5 uh, grams of fat and 24 grams of carbs. So uh, there's actually nine there. So quadrant one, there were nine. And in quadrant three, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me compare over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there are some others here um, that are multiples or duplicates, um, like that point right there with two grams of fat and 18 carbs there. So there's some multiples there. So overall, uh, these that contribute to the positive relationship 
uh, are 21 of those. Now I'm going to look at quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So quadrant 2, that's up here, and it looks like there's 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's actually a multiple in there somewhere. That one right there um, with 2 grams of fat and 24 grams of carbs. So altogether, I think I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in quadrant 4, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, so there's some multiples there. Um, so altogether for that negative relationship, 6 and 6 is 12. And um, if I look at the total number of cases I've got here, um, I, that will tell me 33. I also can see that from the table, there's 33. And those numbers there add up to 33. So I know uh, we've got all of them considered. So to figure out the quadrant count ratio, or the QCR, we're going to take the number in the first and third quadrant, the positive relationship ones, we're going to subtract out the ones in the, um, in the quadrant two and four, the negative relationships, and divide by the total number that we have. So 21 minus 12 is 9, and uh, divided, 9 divided by 33 is, um, let me check on my calculator here, uh, 9 divided by 33. I know another equivalent fraction, uh, but 9 divided by 33 is equal to 0.27. Uh, it's a positive 0.27, so there is a slightly positive relationship. But this number is pretty close to zero, so it's not a really strong relationship. Um, if I go back to this and I look at um, and ask CODAP for the least squares line, it will tell me what the least squares line is. Um, and that least squares line, it gives a r squared. Um, so this is a measurement of that coefficient of variation of 0.117. Um, and I would say if I wanted r, I would take the square root of that and then use the positive value because we can see that we have a positive relationship. One thing I want you to notice is if I, if I drag a point around, it changes some things. I can change the um, correlation coefficient. I can change the slope of the line. I notice that um, of the line of best fit. I notice that if I move it around in this same quadrant, however, I'm not changing the quadrant count ratio. Uh, this point was originally in quadrant four. And when I drag it around somewhere else in quadrant four, I'm not changing the quadrant count ratio. So the quadrant count ratio is um, not very sensitive to those outliers. Not, it, it, um, it, it, will, it will take those outliers and uh, it just puts them in the quadrant. Same thing if I grab this outlier up here and drag it down. As long as I keep it in the second quadrant, it's not changing the quadrant count ratio. If I were to drag it over on the other side of the mean, now I'd have to recalculate the quadrant count ratio. Let's look at one more example here. Um, uh, some different variables. So let me get rid of my work down here. And let's try to think of some variables that we think might be strongly correlated. Um, how about fat and sugar or fat and calories? Fat and calories sounds good. Um, ooh, th those look pretty close to that line of best fit. And I can tell from the correlation coefficient, uh, the squared version is, is pretty close to one. So I'm going to say this is a pretty strong relationship. I didn't really want to look at that. Uh, this video is about the correlation or the quadrant count ratio. So one thing I notice is nothing is in the third or fourth quadrant, uh, but that's because this red line here doesn't work for this set of data. I still have fat as the horizontal axis, so that's the mean of the fat, but now I need the mean of the calories and not the mean of the carbs. So mean of calories, and now that looks a little bit better. 
Um, one thing I will point out to you, if you look at that least squares line, it always is going to go through uh, where the mean lines meet. So that's kind of an interesting feature about the least squares line. It is always anchored right there at the intersection of the means of the two variables. Okay, so I can tell just looking at this, this is a really strong positive quadrant count ratio because there's hardly anything in quadrant two or quadrant four. Uh, but let's go ahead and calculate it. So if I highlight all of these in the first quadrant, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's in quadrant one. And in quadrant three, um, one, two, three, four, five. Well, I'm not going to count those. Never mind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So fourteen plus seventeen is equal to fourteen plus seventeen is equal to thirty one. I, I know I only have thirty three in here, so I'm guessing there's only two. Um, there's one and there's the other. So um, only had one in quadrant two and one in quadrant four. And so one plus one is two. And so for my quadrant count ratio, I'm going to take the 31 in the positive quadrants, subtract the two from the negative relationship quadrants. That's going to give me 29 divided by 33, which is really close to one. And on my calculator that you can't see here, oh, actually I can bring up a calculator. Here we go, 29 divided by 33 is 0.87 as a decimal, uh, 8787 repeating. Um, that's pretty close to one, so that's a pretty strong positive relationship from the quadrant count ratio. This is a good stepping stone for middle school students. It's very intuitive, and it helps us know what to do when they move later uh, to start looking at some things that are actually uh, a better measurement, like uh, that um, correlation coefficient right there. Again, if I move one of these values, I can change the correlation coefficient, but I don't change the quadrant count ratio as long as I stay inside uh, the, that quadrant.